Big Shook, Big Shook. It's really real right now. Mr. DL. Two, two, two. Two, two, two. Who's off? Yo, yo, we are here. Episode 67 of the Danger Zone podcast. I was looking up dazed and confused. You know what that means. <laughs> Two more till 69. Oh, yeah. La zona del peligro. <laughs> we are here with the yeah, legendary we, big shit. We'll have to do the oh. show. We'll have to do the show upside down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Not upside down, but a little yin and a little yang. Um, here they'll, but they'll be like, yo, they'll be like, yo, why are they upside down? <laughs> they will say it's the That's 69th like, episode. You know, you They'll know. have to figure it out. A little, little subliminal. Two, it's, it's like a, it's like Bailey with two heads. Oh, What's shit. up? What's up? But <laughs> I didn't get that. Anyway, um, yeah, episode 67, man. Hey. Yeah. We got with Big Shug, Mr. DL, and Chef Tanya Nicole, man. Welcome we are back. back, everybody. We are back for another week yeah, of hip hop you know, and pop culture. Yeah, you no, know, and, and, and life and shit. You know what I mean? So. Um, this week, hey, what you see is what you get. Yep. And um, today, well, also one story real quick. Um, I just recently peeped that someone asked if Jadakiss, if uh, someone ever asked him to redo his verse, right? And um, and usually they say, you know, people would be offended, you know, yeah, like, yeah. you know, what you talking about? You know what I'm saying? Whatever. But <clears throat> I think the, the part that people get confused too is the bag is probably pretty nice too, though. You know what I mean? When the bag is nice, it's a little bit different being like, okay, now if someone's paying like a short amount of money and they want you to do, go in there and do cartwheels and shit. But first of all, we all know Jada Kids to be, you know, superior lyricist. Like, yeah. you know, that's what he's known to be. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so he said he wasn't offended, but... You couldn't. I can give you three guesses unless you know the answer. You I couldn't even answer. imagine who. We'll let Tanya who guess. You know, we'll let Tanya guess. You know the answer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Who do you think? Who do you think told? The, what was who, the question? Who do you think told Jadakiss to rewrite his verse? He's, he's, a, he's a current rapper. We've talked about him a lot. Kanye. No, close. Kodak. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I can. So. I can see that. Uh, not. I don't think. I wasn't there, but I. I don't. I'm not going to say Kodak thought his verse was whack, but his verse might have been too lyrical to be on the song. You know, you feel what I'm saying? Because like, Kodak, mean, Kodak isn't isn't that kind of rapper. So he want, he might have been like, oh, man. Him to, Go ahead. He wanted him to be more plugged, like he wanted to fit fit better, so to speak. Yeah. And then, um, and then um, Jadakiss was like, and it, and it could be like you said. And Jadakiss was like, all right, no problem. You know, let's knock it out. Because you know, Dudes were not sitting in that room with him getting a verse from him yeah. for two thousand yeah, dollars. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. So if we're covering money more, on the let's table. just say it was twenty five thousand. Let's just say it was that. Yeah, it yeah. probably was more, but let's say it's that. So now we're sitting in the office. We're sitting in the twenty five thousand office doing something that we do naturally. So if you don't like something, you're, at, you're the power. I'm the doing a verse on your shit. So you can say to anybody, like, hey, you do another verse for me. Yeah. So needless to say, he did it. Um, he's um, the same thing happened when Kanye West had said that to um, Rick Ross, mm. and Rick Ross had never been told that before, you know, either. And uh, he said he had three or four verses right there, but you know, he just wanted it a certain way. You know what I mean? And and then again, when I sit in a room for small money, you know, what I'm saying yeah, yeah. it's like it's like yo, well, people big are saying, though, first I of all. Are you a? Are uh, you? Would you be offended if somebody asked you to do the verse over? I, I was never offended. The thing, the reason why I say that is because someone did uh, said that. Excuse me, because this shit just came down. Yeah, right. But anyway, someone had said, um, "Yo, I want you to, um, I want you to give, you know, like, like I was looking for something like that, militia, right?" And so when he said that, that was stupid yeah. because it was like, "Yo." Um, you know, I says I got the best response. All, for you're you. never, you're, you're not going to get another militia, right? You, that's yeah. that's. If you're looking for for me to do that, you're not going to make another beat like that, exactly. or yeah. rhyme like that, and, and it's not that time. So, and I said, I tell you what, if you want to give me this, 
right? You give me that verse back, I'll do another one. Yeah. And he says, um, well, yeah, okay, but then he's probably thinking about whatever his budget was, right? So then he says, I'm going to hit you back tomorrow. Then, then he's, tomorrow he call, hits me back and he goes, oh, man, I, I was bugging, man. You know, this is crazy. Like, this is... So that translation to me means that he went and played that shit for, for people around him. Yeah. You know what I mean? They were like, yo, that shit's like, fire. Oh, this, this shit is fire. With, you know what I'm saying? And then because the way he, he went from... You know, say, being one unpopped kernel to being a full blown corn, yeah. right? <laughs> I mean, he was a full blown popcorn when he called me the next day. Hey, I'll take, yo, that's dope. So, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, Another thing it could have been. Seen- I don't think it. I don't think it was. Like, actually, I don't know if it was or it wasn't because Kodak Black is is egotistical. He knows Jadakiss is from a certain era where everybody thinks he's the best rapper, this and that. So it could have been a power move. Where it could have been like, mm. yo, I, I don't like that. Do it, do another one. You know what I mean? Because he is a little, he, yeah. I like Kodak, so but he, he is a little douchebag like that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, if if you take it outside of the rap world, like if I'm thinking someone's paying me for a service or a catering or whatever, and I make a menu for them, and they say, yo, you know what? Can you just change this or like, can we serve this with that? For me, it's not a criticism on me. It's just more of a preference thing. So, you know, I just wanted to know yeah. from like the other well, side. It would have been though if, the they, if they ate it. the food, if they if you made the dinner, bang, 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 they wanted, oh, we want this, we want chicken parm from Tanya, and you made it, and then they said, ah, I don't like it. You'd feel a certain way probably. I, huh? I, I, think I mean, it's always all in the delivery though. Yeah. You know? It's, it's part, but you know what? Part of that is, part of that is like, you know how you make to make something. Like you, you, you know how to make a certain dish that that they ask for, and you know, just like for instance, I got a dish I can make. <clears throat> excuse me, steak, onions, peppers, gravy, right? You know, I got a dish that I can make of that. I know for a fact that it's going to be good, right? If you like steak and gravy, it's going to be good. Now, from the from the the steak I use. You know what I'm saying? Which is going to be a tender cut steak. You know what I mean? Uh, like a strip or, you know what I'm saying? Uh, one of them type of joints. So you're gonna, it's going to melt as you eat it. I know that. If I give that to you and that's what you want and you said to me, oh man, this, I don't know, what's up with this? Well, I'm, like, well, I'm going to feel like, okay, this motherfucker's an ass. You see what I'm saying? Not your preference is your preference. But I mean, this is also being an ass. You see what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, that's why so, I say it's all in the delivery, you know, right? So you yeah. know, I mean, yo, one time, hey, real quick, I went to a restaurant one time, and I think it was me, Phil, and, and my two sons, and we was all in the restaurant, and cheese, uh, cheesecake factory had just opened. We go to cheesecake factory, we order the grub, we kind of excited, you know what I'm saying? Hey, cheesecake factory, boom. So. I think she gets uh, scampy or something, right? Yeah, with the angel hair and the sauce and what have you. Um, and we get, I get paella, and uh, so I don't like paella. I'm not a seafood person, but they made it with chicken and, and, and other stuff. So um, I get that. And my son got buffalo and mother one got pizza. When she goes to put the fork in of this uh, this dish, the whole, enti- the whole entire dish comes up. Like the angel hair and everything, right? Oh my god! I said, "Yo, I said, yo, pick that up again." And she goes, and the whole angel hair, everything, right? Like it's fake as hell. So you know me, like y'all been around me long enough to know He's that. Not I'm having it. You got to pick picture it up. I said, "Yo," I said, "Come here for a minute." And so I says to her, "I said, yo, do that again, right?" And so this is new cheesecake, right? So it's just open. Everybody's new. Waitresses, everybody. And she does, and then the, and she does it a couple times, <laughs> and then the waitress is like, um, well maybe it's the presentation, like like, like it was supposed to be that. Uh-uh. So, so I, I say to her, and I'm looking at her like, well, she's probably a new waitress, uh, and she she don't know what's going on here, because I never seen that like that in my life. Either. So then I says, so you're trying to say the preparation, you're trying to say this is supposed to be like this? I said, I said okay. I said, get your manager. You know what I'm saying? I, can, I says, get the manager. Now we get the manager. I says to Phil, do it again. 
she, she picks it up and he says, oh, no, that's not supposed to be like that. You know, and he's a right man, away. So he knew what like, was up. Hey, he ushers the plate out of there. We remake everything. We get our meal for free and then we get uh, coupons for the next couple of meals to be free. Mm, but it was good. just, I was just throw that story because it was like, wow, somebody brought that plate out. And that's some bullshit. And there's no way you're eating that. You know what I mean? So yeah. it is what it is. But, hey, from verses to pork chops, whatever, man. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm going to shout out. How it work? Oh, I want to shout out 50 Cent following in Tyler Perry's footsteps. He just um, acquired a 900, 980,000 square foot film studio. It's almost a million well, square feet. Doing it. It's crazy how big that is. Well, um, and he's going to call it G-Unit TV. So I, I'm assuming he's going to start shooting all his TV shows on, on sets and, and it, when, when he like can. You know what I'm it's like, it's like, like in, um, when um, COVID was going on, um, mm. remember they were filming all that stuff inside of that uh, studio, whatever that, that Tyler Perry had. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Georgia. Uh, and, and they were doing that with a lot of TV shows where you had to almost be in a bubble. Like the like the NBA and everything else yeah, that yeah. year. You know what I mean? So uh shout out to fifty because you know, as um as we, you know, see certain things and 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 here today gone to mom mentality and even, you know, well or sick, you know what I mean? A brother to keep pushing and striving like that and making some things happen, man. It's amazing because we ain't taking no money with us. You know what I'm saying? And and our imprint is gonna be through our work, you know what I mean? So it it, it is what it is, you know. Um, also, since we want to talk about uh, money, you know, and, and, and what his investments are, I'm rich. I want to give a shout Look out. Look at my sneakers. <laughs> I'm so rich. Yeah, I know. Well, <laughs> I want. Speaking of sneakers, I, I want to talk about the shacks that used to be at Walmart. Now I'm way fucking around, but yeah. they did have shacks in there for five yeah. dollars. They and they only look good on you if you was about any anywhere between the age of one to three. But <laughs> other than other than that, it wasn't going to work. That's you know what I'm right. saying? So, as people know, Shaquille O'Neal, the famous basketball player and very dominant in his era, won four championships. Um, you know, the, the uh, special personality, but a special player too. He, he was he was that. Yeah. Now everybody wants to say I'm him. He was him at the time. You yeah. know what I mean? At center position. But he, but as an entrepreneur, which he's become, and you guys probably seen him on the commercials and all these different things. Um, we'll let it be known. They want to say this is titled um, stuff they don't want to tell you on TV. They want to tell you the bad stuff. But Shaquille O'Neal owns five, 155 Five Guys restaurants, 17 Auntie Anne's. Shaquille, let me get a couple. Let me get a couple. Those are good those franchises to invest in, right. people. Yo, hey, I'll take 16 of them cinnamon pretzels. I love those shits. <laughs> them cinnamon, both of you those, can't eat just one of them. Yeah, both of those places exist exclusively in malls or strip malls. So their business is constant, constant business. And, uh, well, well, you know, downtown Boston, Yeah, um, five guys right there on Summer Street. Well, for Dolo, you I know what I mean. I can't picture it, but I believe you. I can't. I can't see it. Yeah, because yeah, across the street is Wendy's, <laughs> and, and down the next corner is Taco Bell. I know that area, so that's what I'm like. It's kind it's of the fast food trying. And you see bums. I, I left a bunch of gangstar shirts out there that that were too big, and Cash is putting them on like crazy. So I know y'all got them shirts. You know, <laughs> free advertising. Wear them with good health. Them shit was like three or four duty. X's, man. Philanthropy. I, I, I don't bless that no more. So. They wear they wear gangster. If you go to your nearest um, shelter and someone has on a gangster shirt, they got it from sure. You nice. know what I mean? So nice. anyway, Give he had um, 150 car washes. Damn. Um, 40 24 hour fitness centers. Oh wow! A shopping center, a movie theater, and several Las Vegas nightclubs. So needs to say, Shaq's doing very well in the business world. Yeah, he's I smart. I give him a shout out because that's good. He, he'll never appear on the show broke. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, and, and all those who know the story too, that Shaq once made the largest purchase of all time from Walmart. You, know, you can true. look that one up. What was it? What did he buy? <laughs> His he own spent sneakers? like $10,000 or something. No, I can't remember no, what, no, what happened was he, um, he moved, like, you know, when you get traded like that, Yeah. he got traded or something somewhere quick. 
and he wanted to furnish where he was going to be at, like on, on spot. You see what I'm saying? So he went there buying everything, you know? Give me seven, four TVs, this and that, that and that, you know what I mean? Yeah. And boom, just so he could be, get the crib going. But he was the biggest purchase that, that was ever made there. So I hear what you be saying on that show, Shaq, man. Y'all be bullshitting around, but I'll be listening to you. I think Shaq, um, is, I think Shaq is probably the most dominant basketball player that ever played the game. Do you think there's been a center that has come anywhere near what he left on the court? Do you think anyone has picked up that? There's only one center. There's only one center. You could say that he was most dominant, like, for his time physically. I think because he was a physical specimen. I mean, he was scoring people 40, forget early. 40 fucking points. Like, right. You know what I'm well, saying? Like, but listen, he's the only dude, he's the only dude who probably led the league in scoring a few times without a jump shot and missing all those foul shots. Yeah. If Shaquille O'Neal never missed all them foul shots he missed, he would be the all-time leading scorer like, ever. It's, it's impossible that he wouldn't have been that because yeah. he's scoring all these points. So when we speak dominance, you know, we want to speak about, that's why I say Michael Jordan and, and, and certain other players and Shaquille because at their time, they were that dominant and above. Mike is a, a, a player, but Shaq basically is a player, but a center, you know, doing his thing down low, killing people. But um, it's crazy. if you look at basketball, go ahead. Sorry. If you look at basketball overall, not to cut you, but um, Will Chamberlain, because of the time too, and what was out there, he was like no one was as dominant as that. That that's like, I mean, you know what I'm saying? It's just ridiculous because of first of all. He was athletic at seven foot one. Like it wasn't just like he was seven foot one because it was a bunch of them around. Yeah. But he was athletic, and he's averaging all these ridiculous points and blocks. And whether well, people were short and weren't the best athlete or whatever at the time, we could only play in the time that we were born. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I, you know, go ahead. What was you saying? Um, no, I was just saying like everyone always says Kobe Bryant, Kobe Bryant, Kobe Bryant. And when you think of Kobe Bryant, I I personally think of those years with Shaq. And, you know, they won three titles, like like you're saying, but Kobe Bryant wasn't even the MVP on any of those teams. It was Shaq. Right. I feel like Shaq. Right. I, I just right. feel like I, I don't think we ha- saw another Shaq. They hyped up Yao Ming, you know, but it just wasn't, now, it just wasn't see, Shaq, you know what I'm saying? So what, what happens is the dilemma we have here is the, 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 the age and the time, like when it comes to you and I, because I was like, I was witnessing some of these players that I thought were great centers and how they stand out amongst people. First of all, I can name four guys right now over those years, probably starting back uh, from the 70s or something. But a Willis Reed, uh-huh. a, um, a Willis Reed, uh, a Wes Unsel, oh, wow. a Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, yeah. and a Will Chamberlain with dominant centers. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And then you go and um and and to watch these games, you know, as an individual, uh, like when when Mike Jordan was scoring sixties and all them points like that, right? So Will Chamberlain of his time and and uh Kareem and his early time blasting on the scene, like dudes were just scoring relentlessly. Like they were just yeah. there was well, nothing were, for it. Yeah, plus, yeah. They were playing plus they made they, foul shots. They were playing huh? guys my size. I mean, but that's not. I, I'm sorry. I, I know it's a com. I know it's a com- comical view that we take. Yeah, yeah. But like I said, when you, we said it before, Kareem always used to want to talk. They used to. He said Kareem said they always wanted to talk about he was dominant because he was seven foot two. Yeah. But something like there were oh, no one ever talks about in the NCAA tournament that year. I want to say he said it was over 50 players or better. The number's probably even bigger. That was seven feet and above. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it just showed that everybody who was tall couldn't play. Yeah. You know what I mean? When, like I, he, when, he, when I was a kid, like the impressionable ages, like a young teenager, we had the great centers in, in the league. It was great. David Robinson, Ewing, Olajuwon. Like it was it was great watching those guys. With the, and, and, they still weren't. And shy. think about this. Think about what you just said. So we watched the game basically transition from the big man. Like every team wanted a big man. Yep. Mike Jordan kind of changed that. You know what I mean? Because yeah. even that year, he wasn't the first pick. It was a big man. Yep. You know, because that was the NBA we knew. 
inside out. And they were like, you, you, you couldn't dominate without like that big man being the, everything going through him. Yeah. You know, if you've seen the movie, the movie that you, you amped me up on, I mean, the series. What was it? The L.A.? The, yeah, yeah. What was uh, that? The, the Showtime. No, what the hell was the name of that show? Oh, it was about yeah, the, Showtime. the Bulls. No, the, the it was Showtime, oh, right? Showtime, yeah. It might have been Showtime. It was like, what about the Bulls? So too. when you put me on to that, and if you watch that, that and you see when uh, Magic Johnson was like, yo, yeah, we'll be straight. You get your old ass up the court, top in the Kareem. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So that interjected him, his energy into him because he was on the, you know, getting older. You know what I mean? He got yeah. this young dude like, man, listen. You know what I mean? So, you know, if, and those were dominant teams. But dominant play, and, and Shaq happened to be on a dominant team because, because of him. If you take Shaq off those teams, the teams are not the same. Yeah, you know, yeah. there's no one who match. Who, who drafted? You know, so. Who drafted Sam Bowie? I forget. Like who? Who fucking drafted him? But let me tell you something. So being <laughs> of that time, I forget too. But being of that time, I was like, you thought that was the pick to make because yeah, that's yeah, why yeah. We, you you were, you were on that. You were like, um, yo, here's a good one. The Celtics, the Celtics, the year that Bird came in, right? And Berg did his shit. That was the biggest jump from one year to the other when he was a rookie. But then um, they had um, someone coming out that year, Joe Barry Carroll, right? Everybody wanted him. He was the prize pick. So Red Arbeck at the time makes a pick. He makes a um, a pick with, uh, who does he get? Uh, Kevin McHale. He makes a pick for Kevin McHale, and he makes a trade for Robert Parrish. Now, I'm a fan at the time, coming up as a kid. I'm like, what type of stupid shit is that? You know, this is me, like, yeah. and like not knowing at that age. And from what you've seen all the time, these dump, these big centers, everybody wanted to be a seven foot center. Like, even regular people walking around, like, yeah. if I'm seven feet, I'll be in the NBA. So, <laughs> but then we seen, we seen what happened afterwards. You know what I mean? So, you know, I mean, and, and, and on another note, I know some cats that are seven feet, six, nine, six, ten, that suck. Yeah. Can't so I'm just saying, you know. So well, do you, go ahead. One, one last thing I just kind of want to say before we get off of that. Do you think the Rockets fucked up, or do you think it was a fine a fine choice taking Olajuwon number one over Jordan? I think that I think they oh, made no. they made out all right. Nah, nah, that that was good. That was good. He he was he was the center for the time. Yeah, he was it. Yeah, yeah. Took took Mike and him a, fi- a few to get you know figure it what it was, but um, all right, hell yeah, Olajuwon was the man. That was the team, having Kenny and them do so, you know. Shout out to them. Also, um, on another note, uh, Deontay Wilder, 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 Wilder. I didn't tell you this on the Oh, oh, I didn't know, but no, no, I didn't tell her, so you can so you can tell her on the podcast. Okay, let's start the story. All right, Deontay Wilder was arrested. Um. In charge with possession of a concealed weapon. So, those who don't know who Deontay Wilder is, and you've been living under a rock, he was champion for quite some time. I believe he only has two losses. Yep. They're both the uh, Fury, Tyson Fury, yep. back yep. to back. Yep. Um, he just can't beat him. But he's driving. I, I assume, you know, I don't even want to assume, but I'm going to say probably erratically. So he gets pulled over. Now he's driving his Rolls Royce and um, they pull him over, they smell marijuana. And so wherever they're at, because some places you can't search anymore like that, but yeah. for some reason they were able to search and then they found the, you know, the nine millimeter or what have you. Now, um, charge. a few hours later, he was uh, released on $35,000 bail. Yeah. Now the crazy shit about this is, I was uh, speaking to DL earlier all these years go by and people are still not just learning how this thing works. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, you have an attachable mindset where you're like, well, I'm in my Rolls Royce that I probably dreamed to have some shit like this um, and worked hard because you had to fight. Fighting is one of the hardest jobs out here. I don't care what it looks like to people sitting down. You physically get beat fighter, the F up. You know, Right, and one, uh, yeah, beat, get, beat the F up, the A, B, C, E, D, you, you, all the letters, the all they, the letters. They just think they just think it's that fight. They think that's all it is. No, every day he's fighting, uh, training for that fight. You had to get there. Yeah, yeah, like you every day he's training, fighting a real fighter, 
that has to be on the level of the guy he's fighting every day. Right. <laughs> and one thing somebody, somebody told me when I used to uh, box as a uh, teenager, so the first thing my father, too, uh, first thing would say, so imagine. See, the thing you're not thinking about, even when you see street fights or whatever, so imagine you're keeping your hands up for three minutes. Yeah. Like, you can't, like, people don't know. Someone's yeah. punching on you, hitting you, you moving, whatever, but your hands are up, too, for three minutes. Because mm -hmm. if you put them down, you go down. Yeah. You know what I mean? So <laughs> that, that's part of the train. That's like, yo, you're getting hit, you got to hit. And those gloves punches. are not light. Plus, you got to keep these shits up. Yep. They even hold your hands up. She used to even hold your hands up sitting in the chair for three minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Let no, me know how that They goes. say that's good how for your core. For if you put your hands up like this, and you just sit just like this. Yeah. Hands up so, like well, if you, if you, hey, if you put like your that. hands up like that in the ring, you get knocked the F out. Well, no, but I didn't mean in the <laughs> ring. I meant as a training <laughs> tool. So, I know. In the core. I know. So, like, with, like last week with Chip Fu, I'm on the fence with this whole Deontay Wilder thing. I do think he's dumb. He should have. I looked it up while we were talking. It happened in Nevada where the weed wasn't a, a, an issue. <clears throat> so all you really need to do is get your concealed carry. But his quote is, I kind of like his quote, hey, I'd rather be safe than sorry. And, mm -hmm. um, and a guy like him can't really fight. He can't really get in fights. Because even if someone starts a fight with you, the second you knock them unconscious or dead because you're Deontay Wilder, you're done. Your 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 Rolls Royce is gone. Your your everything you, you know you, you know. So a gun charge is better? No, it's not better. Do I just you, I I just kind of on the fence. I don't know. I hope do you know the story? Do you know this? Do you know, this, do you know what? You know this has happened before, though, right? To him? To people no. in general? Oh oh yeah yeah, with, yeah absolutely. Over bo and over again. With boxers fucking somebody up like in the streets. Yeah, Mike Tyson. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah, he was he was. That's a clear cut one. And the dude's <laughs> eye was like this, Ooh. right? You know what I mean? But Ooh. because, and even shit, even man like shit, he about to whoop out that dude on the plane. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's, yeah. it, it, when someone's hitting you, you got to protect yourself. I don't care them since yeah. his weapons, but. But anyway, finish the story is, uh, I'm just saying, as we aspire to work hard to get to the top, to be in these positions, um, I know his mindset too is probably, I'm driving the Rolls Royce, I'm chilling, I'm living my life. I'm still rich, even though I got knocked the fuck out. You know what I'm saying? So I'm still living life. This is life. This is real. You know what I mean? Um, years from now, you, you, you'll probably be sitting somewhere. He'll probably sit somewhere chilling with Tyson Fury, yeah. talking about back in them days. But I know as a fighter and as a comp competitor, he lost his, I mean, he won, he won his last fight he just had, but that dude yeah. looked like a clown. Well, that's the thing. Um, yeah. Tyson Fury figured out how to fight him, and it's it's to bully him, but no one's going to want to do that. Even though they know, all right, well, if, I, if I could get this guy to fight, to back up, like Tyson did, I could win, but I don't want to walk over there. <laughs> but you, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, but you know something? You know something? So, to have have the power to punch and, and drop somebody and knock them the fuck out. Um, that's a good thing. Yeah. Right? But the other thing you need to do is have the jaw, the chin, yeah. to be able to take that same type of yeah. power. So He never saw it until he fought that guy. I'm saying this to say, I'm saying that to say this. Deontay Wilder did only, didn't only lose the fight from uh, uh, getting beat up by Tyson Fury, he lost the fight when he gave that dude everything he had and dropped him. Yeah, and dude, he thought it was over, like it had been forty yeah. plus times before. You, you saw, like, he, and when dude, he thought it was over. All that final adrenaline he had left his body because mm -hmm. he he mentally thought it was over, and then he turned around mm -hmm. and that guy was fucking standing there. Uh, and he was yo, like, you "What?" See, if you look at the clip. If you look at the clip that they show at times, if you look at the clip, you will see um, how Deontay Wilder's face is, how he's like, yo, I can't believe that. And that's how anybody would be. If you right now, DL, sock somebody with all the DL shit you got in you. You know what I'm saying? Fist, elbow, shoulder. If you threw it all in there. And then you said, you look at Tony you're like, that, that's over. Right? Yeah, <laughs> then you yeah. turn back over and dude was like, yeah, yo, it's tough is that all you got? Now, yo, the war is on. Yeah. You know what I mean? But now, 
I don't know. Dude was a little shook after that. I don't yeah, care. Yeah, yeah. That's Absolutely. almost like that's almost like you hit the predator, and then when he kept still coming, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he kept coming, right? You was like, that's what happened, and dude fucked him up. So mentally, you lost him physically. Yeah. But what I'm saying in a nutshell is, when you work hard for what you got, remember that where you're at. When you get there, man, appreciate it, because little stuff like this is stuff that doesn't necessarily have to happen. Yeah. You can get a license to carry yeah, that's if you can't. Then don't count. No. I mean, that's really real life. I think you know every, I think every, like everyone, every, like a guy like a Vander Holyfield, a Tyson Fury, uh, Deontay Wilder. I think they all should have a weapon. I think it should be um, legal, I guess, because of who they are and how famous they are. Because they, everyone in the world knows they're super tough and they can't fight them. Really, like they might say to their friend under their breath, "I'll fuck, I'll fuck Deontay Wilder up. I'll fuck him up." But when you see him, you're not gonna fuck him up. You're gonna have to shoot him. Mm. You, you, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. like, and, and and guys like that know that. So I think they should eat, mm. should have protection, or you know, I don't know because no one's gonna want to fight that. It's you know? not the fact all that security. oh he can't have protection. It's the fact that yes, you are Deontay Wilder. You can go through the right chains and just get a, a gun permit. Yeah. Like it's not, he like, should have been stupid as hell. It's, it's not that serious. So that's the problem. It, it's what Big Sugar thing is like. And if you, you have to think, yeah, and that's if you can't. Because, okay, some guys might have a blemish pass. So if you have that blemish pass, then you can't carry it. You yeah. can't do it. So you got to know that. That's like driving without a license, which which 80% of America is probably guilty of all the time, right? Yeah. Shit, that's how many how many musical stories or sports stories have you heard over the year? Where DMX was caught driving without a license. Yeah. So-and-so was caught without driving without a license. Like, you know what I mean? So people continue to do something. And even in New York, they, they made the penalty higher for carrying a gun. So even if you got a gun, you're going to jail for like a year, whatever. Felony you know what I'm saying? Charge, same yeah. in mass. Yeah. Mass is the same way. Massachusetts the same way. Is you get caught with advice. a gun. Don't do two illegal yeah. things. Yeah. At Massachusetts the same time. is like mandatory. It doesn't matter who you are. You're being stupid. Yep. Don't be you're going, going stupid. in for it. You're getting a year. Right away. Yeah. You're in there. Right away, too. You're going right. Yo, you can have a lawyer. All you're doing is spreading your dates out. Yeah, exactly. Because when, we're going. When the day comes, <laughs> yeah. there's no getting out of it. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? You're going to do the you one know, stupid you, thing. You can give the judge. Just, a, just do one. Don't do a bunch of stupid you things. Can give the, you, you can give the judge, judge a million dollars, right? And biscuits for life, oh. right? <laughs> but he's, he, you ain't getting out of that shit, Something's going to stick. Know, so, yeah. Huh? Yeah, he said yeah. something's going to stick. I want to show, sure, man. I want to shout sure. out a couple hip hop acts, but and then I want to read some uh, rock and roll acts that will blow your mind that they are not in the rock and roll hall of fame. But this year, just- yep. Why don't you tell us who the most exciting name this year? Uh, who 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 got nominated for the rock and roll hall of fame this year? Well, my my favorite is Missy Elliott. Absolutely. Which I think she definitely Ooh, Missy, Missy Elliott. Elliott. Ooh? Missy Elliott. Oh, I thought you but I thought you was about to say bad bunny, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's gonna be in there. He's just not in there yet. So I want Mad Mad Funny. But uh, go ahead. You know, Cool Herc Cool Herc got nominated, even though he's not on this list. Uh, it's crazy he's not on that list, but he got nominated. Missy Elliott and a tribe called Quest. So uh shout out to those three hip hop acts that are uh, nominated to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. But there's something that blew my mind. This blew my mind. Rage Against the Machine isn't in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Yeah, I would I would agree. I would agree. They're they're being uh-huh. nominated this year. I'm like what? That, that's crazy to me. Yeah, because I feel like, like, they, I were, feel like they were huge. Of my generation, hey. they were the one. Even rap, like, oh, I only like rap. I don't like rock. They liked Rage Against the Machine. I know Wu-Tang had a lot to do with the, you know, the tour, the big tour they had together. I know that might have had a lot to do with it. But, um, yeah, I was shit, blown we, away. Shit, we went on a huge-ass tour with them. Yeah, yeah. Several days, you know, like, like all over the place, like, touring with them. That's how I got cool with them and... And I was like, it was us first with the same wild crowd that loved us. The beginning, it was a little sticky because they used to throw batteries and shit up on the stage, right? Even when they was in shoes and shit, yeah. even when um, Rage Against the Machine, we was like, yo, we ready to fight people, you know what I'm saying? But then, by the time we was like, I don't know if people got the wind or whatever, but at the time of the third show, yo, it was super love for them. Like, it was always love anyway, but when yeah. we come out, but we come out first, we tear that joint up. And mind you, these are coliseums. You know what I'm saying? So wherever they play pro sports, 
These shits was packed. Yep. The whole floor part yeah. and the, uh, every bleach you could see. Mm -hmm. Biggest shows I ever performed at, you know, as far as um, maybe maybe um, a couple of European festivals that had like quarter million people. But other yeah. than that, this shit is... People don't even know what that is. So just hear people cheer when the numbers are like that. You're like, damn. But as far as the rock and roll uh, Hall of Fame, as we know, it's just not rock and rollers. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's hip hop, hoppers. It seems like... Uh, Bro. There's another the, name. The longevity of artists and their impact on, on, on music. You know what I mean? There's another name on this list that you're going to be maybe even more blown away by than Rage Against the Machine. This list is crazy. Who's that? Willie Nelson, who has been- He's a, not in there? Nah. He's he's being nominated this year. Fucking, he's been a A-list musician for 50, <laughs> 60 decades. years. And it, mm. the, just the people who are in and not. No, don't get me wrong. I love Missy Elliott. Like, I think Missy Elliott's dope. I think she's awesome. But does she be, deserve to be in there before Rage Against the Machine? I don't think so. But, but you know what? I think that I think they're looking at maybe genre genre wise as well. Yeah. Because and you think like Hurt, why would Hurt be in there? Because of his what he did, like as far as bringing the hip hop and how that was. Yeah, yeah. Like I feel like DJ Premier. Uh, and, and, and probably posthumously, it probably will happen. I feel like like uh, Gangstar, but I feel like Premier himself should even have a, 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 a star on the um, Walk of Fame. Yeah, and be in there. The reason why I even say him on is the not just of, of, of the affiliation of, of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. You think? And then the um, I think that too because yeah. this is why I say that. Okay. So the dude, first of all, if you come from that part in the 90s and moving forward. Yeah. The dude, like when you talked about producers, even though he wasn't pop, first of all, the first hip hop producers they would always talk about was two. It was Premier and Dr. Dre. Dr. Dre would even say himself, like, you know, like, well, I think DJ Premier is the only one who got, you know, you know what I mean? So these are two people that was ahead of the pack like that. And it was, their imprints were on everything. Yeah. Imprints, look, Dr. Dre, his imprints was on Tupac. And the West Coast, yeah. Premier was like on big, Biggie in the East Coast, Nas. like you know what I mean? It's, yeah, Nas and all them. So it's like these dudes are the mo war movement. I just feel like he still is. Like he's still the living. I don't. I don't I argue that. As, I, I think. I think as it comes, it probably will be Gangstar that that is nominated because really? of really. I think uh, the opposite. Yeah. Well, I feel like it could be him, but I feel like I say Gangstar because sometimes posthumously will make them want to do that. You yeah. see what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 definitely. You know? And something becoming greater in the absence of someone like that in death. You know what I mean? So people still travel about the, the star Kurt on the Cobain, Hollywood I mean. the star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, uh I definitely see that, hell yeah. Because um Yeah, me too. I it isn't have I'm, you been there? I, yes. Yeah, so it isn't just actors, it's it is musicians, you know what I'm saying? So um yeah, I can see. I can definitely see that. Cypress Hill has one. Uh, Ice Cube has one. Mm -hmm. Ice Cube, Cypress Hill. Yeah. There's a few rappers that 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 have them. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you like this: the day that comes, and if it say it's Gangstar on the Hollywood fan, Walk of Fame, you will also see the handprints of Big Show <laughs> along with DJ Premier. Now, reason being, this is some real shit. The reason being is our, you know, we all know the history of both creating the name and, yeah. and, and all of that for Guru, rest in peace. But that's what it's all about. The name that's on that sideboard, uh, Premier and Guru took it to the next level, you know, of prominence, whatever. Yeah. But the name that you see right there was created by me and this guy. You see what I'm saying? So that's you etching stone for life. Like, yeah. you know, like, nah, you, I mean, don't get me wrong. There wouldn't be no pushback or that. It is what it is. I can see I the logo in the, in the star, the star on the Hawk of Fame, and then the star yeah. inside the gang, the gang star logo inside that star. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you got. I mean, because when people sit down anytime and have that conversation of where that that symbol came from and and all of that, um, that like the only person who, who can tell it is me. But but everyone knows it. But then Guru's sister, Trish, and uh, yeah, and um, the brother Jay, they they know the origin because they you know that we connected and that changed that that trajectory. But every time, even when I see it now, um, the, the 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 logo, I'm always like, damn, you know, 
I remember sitting and us doing that. It takes me way back, you know what I mean? Where I'm like, yo, now nah, make that shit like this. You know is what I'm saying? That we need to change. Is there a reason? Huh? Oh, sorry. Is there a reason to the number of points in the star? Is there- well, after, let me tell you this. This is the funny part about that. And it's probably documented. After Cats went on and, and, and I was incarcerated, and um, I was incarcerated, and um, Dude started saying that stuff, like certain shit, like the, the points, whatever. But the origin, which I've said before and I'll say a million times, was we were gangsta. That's who we were. So the gang represented me in the life I lived with my crew, Murder, murder Pan Connection. That was a, like a gang type of gang of you know, friends or whatever, but that's what we were. Yeah. And then Guru, Guru at the time, remember, we're grown men now. We ain't little kids. We're like yeah. 20, 23 around that time. Um, and Guru was like a scholar, Rose Scholar, like top student. Yep. So that's the star pupil. That's as simple as it was said. I'm the one saying, it. yo, so we'll do the star for represent the star pupil and the chain will represent the gang, which is me. And then to get together with gang star. You know what I mean? That's how simple that came together. Because we had to come up, I, I told the story before, but we had to come up with the name on the fly. Because when when um John Johnson, oh, yeah, you Guru said brought thing. me over there to yeah, to record on his shit for the first time that we ever record on beats. And he was like, what's y'all's name? And we didn't have no name, but we played it off and went outside. And I know the wall right now on Elmore Street, shout out to the Johnson family. But we went sat on that wall coming up with all that shit. Then when we got that, we went back in. Yo, we're gangsta. You know, you know what I'm saying? One of the best, yeah. No. When I was a kid, <laughs> this the, yeah. the logo here without the chain, when I was a kid, I always looked like a, a throwing star to me. I don't know if that was meant on mm. purpose, but <clears throat> Roddy moves. <Shuriken. laughs> I, I, I didn't know if that was done yeah. on purpose or not. I didn't know. Yeah. <clears throat> nah, I used to like when the karate stars, them stars so, stick right in the middle of the forehead. Let me just well, let me ahead. just uh, finish this Rock and Roll Hall of Fame shit. Shout well, to ahead. Cheryl hey, Crow. Yeah. Iron. No, why don't you go ahead and finish? That? <laughs> Cheryl <laughs> Crow, <laughs> Iron Maiden, Cindy Lauper. I love Cindy Lauper. George Michael. I think they'll yeah, give him his award like in the bathroom. That. They'll probably Ooh. get Ooh, George, George Michael, <laughs> um, Soundgarden, The Danger Zone, The White Stripes. Do you really want to hurt? Me? And that's it. But, so uh, the ones that, that I that I recognized at least. So yeah, that shit is crazy. Boy George, is it him or the group? George Michael himself. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, George Michael. I George Michael. Boy George. Yeah. No, George Michael. He was the yeah. one that got caught in the bathroom having fun, right? I don't know. Yeah. I'm sure a lot of people got caught in the bathroom. George Mike. George Michael was. I mean. Uh, you. Boy George was the one that saying, "Do you really want to hurt me?" Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Man, you're six foot four, looking kind of different. I don't know <laughs> what's Uh-oh. going on. <laughs> I mean, All right. Um, I didn't realize that shit till years studio? later. Do you really want to hurt me? I don't know what he was thinking. Go ahead. I got kind of a triple um, story here. I'm gonna wrap three people up into one story. Uh-oh. I'm gonna start by going like this. Jerry, 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 Jerry. R.I.P. Jerry. Jerry. Jerry Springer. Pop culture fucking peace. trash TV at its best. It was Jerry Jane. Springer. Jane. Yeah. Trash King. Started off as a judge, yeah. right? Wasn't he a judge in Cincinnati? Oh, I don't yes. know. Yes. He started yes. off as a, he was a judge in Cincinnati. That. And then he, I'm telling you, he had like the, remember shock, well, remember, do you remember shock culture from the 90s? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Jenny Jones, yeah, yeah. Maury you know Povich, like, Geraldo Rivera. He was the, well, not the creator, but he took it to the another level where that guy, Yo, he, his show was beating Oprah. A lot of people don't remember that. His terrible Yo, show took, was beating Oprah. It wasn't he terrible. It to, he he had the it ratings. The, it obviously was he, entertaining. He took it to the next, he took it to the next level. Uh, because he, it was just more trashy than yours. And then, <laughs> when, when everything started, the crazy thing about it, when everything started to fizzle out, all the other shows like that, he was still there with some incredibly trashy topics. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I'm in love with a horse. All this dumb <laughs> shit that we weren't watching no more. You know what I mean? So we, we saw the other shit where we could, oh, this is crazy. But these later years, when it was still on, you just really had to be loving trash TV to watch it because it was topics like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or um, I got these two sisters pregnant and also the dog. You know what I mean? So Make it's sure like how it's you crazy know. shit. No. <laughs> but I got my Jerry Springer story too, though. So um, rest in peace, Jerry Springer, man, because he did, he did some things. Right but now? when we went to go do um, 
we went to perform on Judge. Ju um, excuse me, we went to perform on Jenny Jones. Yeah. Um, Guru, myself, Premier, and uh, Bumpy, uh, Freddie Fox doing the militia. Yeah. So I had no idea at the time that all those shows was in that same studio. You know what I mean? So Jerry Jones was down the hall. Uh, whatever other two shows that were popping at the time. Was it in Chicago and, or New York? And Jenny Jones. Huh? Was it in Chicago or New York? Chicago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So I didn't know that all of them was in this building. Like, I'm just going because I'm like, oh, shit, we're on Jenny Jones. Excuse me, this is dope. You know what I mean? So that's why I'm going. And then... Um, I go and I'm like, yo, um, damn, Jerry Springer does it in this studio? And then whoever else, I can't remember, had the other studio. And what happened, too, was uh, probably Phil Donahue. So when the people lined up, because they lined up for these different shows in the hallway, like the, the trashy um, crowd. Yeah. Right? You know what I'm saying? The trashy so, crowd. You know? So there, there's lines of trash, though. There's lines of um, There's people. white trash for and a block. So we're, hey, it's a we're multicultural in our, um, uh, oh, scene. No. Yeah, yo. The, so listen, we're, we're in our dressing room, Premier and me, Guru, uh, Bump, and everything. And somebody opens the door, right? And then everybody, women mostly, all bum rushed in there. Like the, the whole trash crowd. They bum rushed in this little dressing room, pulling out body parts, arms. Oh, God. Uh, clothes, whatever, sign anywhere. Sign, because they only had like, they gave them about three minutes before they realized it. Because they bum rushed us. Like we, it, it's like somebody opened the door and he's everywhere. Oh, right? So then, you know, I mean, they knew that we weren't with them. You know what I mean? So plus at the time, that, that militia video was probably playing like crazy. Yeah. You know, if you, were, if you were watching TV, like MTV, whatever it was, that video was playing like that shit made me a star. And I, I was just like, oh, shit, you know? So, but it was dope because then we met Jerry. Just talked a little bit. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I'm there for the fun. I mean, Jenny Jones was dope. <clears throat> we went there, we performed. They picked you up in a limo, mad food, you know, drinks. At you. So that part was fun. I'll never forget it. You know what I'm saying? And um, and, and if you see the footage, I just put the footage up. Uh, uh, and Bumpy had too, because it was um, commemorating our guru, the past of guru, what have you. Yeah. And we were just, he just put it up, you know, for memories too. And I was like, damn. Um, that was one of the times, if you look at, if you ever could pull up the footage of Jenny Jones. So Guru, I have on a black vest um, and a green shirt, shoes. I'm, I'm hard bottom, I'm dressed. And Guru has on uh, a black and same color green um, sweatsuit and hat, yeah. right? So that's only one time, but there's several times where people never really realized, like we still felt like we were a group. You know what I'm saying? So we used to do shit like that, unbeknownst to people. Yeah, you see, like, there's a quite a few pictures you can go back and see me and him have the same color scheme on. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Because okay. he'd come to the room beforehand, he'd say, yo, well, we gonna rock tonight. Because he felt like we were still gangstar, like Run DMC or whatever, like how we started, you know? So that's how we always were. So you'll see, I'm just Dude. giving that tidbit, that fun fact, because you'll see more pictures and different videos where you'll see even at Mass Appeal, Smoke Roots tour, you, you uh, see the video and you see what he has on, see what I got. Yeah. On. You know what I mean? It's kind of wild. Speaking so, of uh, Bumpy anyway, Knuckles, I know well, I, I still got another uh, segue, but speaking of Bumpy Knuckles, yeah, go ahead. Um, I never knew this and I'm sure it's all been ironed out because, you know, everything's cool, but I didn't know that he released a diss song about Guru. I just heard it. Well, Guru. I just heard it the other day. I never heard that either. I'll send it to you. It's, it's obviously been yeah. iron, ironed out because, uh, you know. I, I, I never heard that ever. I think like it's. Ever. I think it's. Cor well, I, I think I he this is Cormega and Guru. I'll send it to you. I, you sure? You sure yeah. it's that Guru and not the other one? Young Guru? No, it's a uh, Guru Guru. Yeah, but um, yeah, we like, dude, dude, this is not. We never heard. So if you say, heard it? I, yeah, I saw it on YouTube. You know? and I was like, holy shit! But anyway, um, yeah, because uh, they never the danger zone. They never had no um. They never had issues. So I, that's all new to me. You know what I'm saying? Um. To, uh, I'll, I'll find it, but I want to segue into another passing this week. Um, ever heard this song before? Sad sack. Deo. <laughs> you know that yeah. song? De Harry, De Bel Harry Belafonte passed away. Like uh, you know, he he like modernized that. What's that? What kind of music that's? Calypso? Calypso. Yeah. So also, 
and he's an EGOT winner, so, which is there's not many of those Emmy, Emmy, Emmy Grammy, Grammy, Oscar, Tony, like you know. So it's it's crazy because uh, rest in peace to the great Harry Belafonte, but rest him peace. and Sidney Poitier were, were you know such intertwined, like in such legends and icons, and for them not not to be here any longer. But man, he was he was great because you I know we all know uh, what hip hop song was a hit that used something from him. Yeah, I know you know, DL. Um, I don't off the top. Let me think. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, um, I don't. What is it? Uh, Little Wayne. Oh no shit. Oh yeah. really? Six foot five. Oh that, wow. That, 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 <laughs> oh no that's shit. That's the Tell me, me, I never even yeah, put. Tell me, be nah, nah. That's where that's from. Like no shit. Six foot seven foot. And it goes, then he that, sped it up and threw it in there and shit. He said that, he said that, he said that, he said that. So, that's um, how we probably So, yeah, I just want to Go say ahead. rest in peace to him, an activist. and Facts. You know. I remember him vividly throughout my lifetime. Yeah. Um, by the nah, way, the, the Bumpy Knuckles song is called legend. 81 Bars of Murder, Guru and Cormega Disc, produced by The Alchemist 13 years ago. I never even heard that. Say, <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. I, I never. I mean, you know, I talk to him all the time. I never even heard, like that. Never even came up. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure it's been iron. It's a long time ago. But I was just, I just, I, I, yeah, I, I, I thought you would have known about this. I just, I just found out nah. about it. Yeah. So, so how can we not know? That's why it's like weird. Like, you yeah, know what yeah. I'm saying? I, like none of us have ever. I mean, like we talk all the time. It's never. Now, now I know I made a this record on. I did. On him and um Solo. Because of what that happened, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you oh, might not have yeah. knew that. You yeah, know what yeah. I'm saying? That shit, that shit was like, you know, that shit took me there. But go ahead. <laughs> what uh, else you got? Um, and the last thing for my R.I.P. Um, medley was uh, Heavy D is going to be oh, honored with a statue I love him. in Mount Vernon. Well, I think that's pretty cool. Good for him. I think that's dope because he was Good definitely diddly diddly D. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that. And Heb was always Love. that dude, man. He, like, he was um, like that chubby dude who could dance. He 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 embraced mm -hmm. his R&B side of the thing. You know what I mean? And uh, and he just he, he, Heavy was himself, you know. And then everybody knows, like you know, Heavy diddly did. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's it's like I think that's dope. You know what I mean? So it's always better these days too, sooner than later, you know. And he's probably going to be the greatest music person to come from uh, Mount Vernon. You, you know think what I mean? so? Uh, More than Pete Rock? Yes. 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 It's, well, like I said, some things, um, some things are, uh, are, you know, they become more in depth. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, you yeah. know, something becomes more popular, more polarized, more, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So that's why I feel like with him, with that, uh, but Pete Rock will probably be music or whatever. Uh, yeah, famous Mount like Vernon that. Has a, like like a right now, and like athletes too. Who do you like right now? Someone's asked you, who do you think the most? Who would you say was the most famous person, famous rapper to come out of Boston? All time. Yeah. <sighs> You're gonna hate my answer for the biggest rap song from Boston. No, the truth is the truth. The truth is the truth, sir. Uh, whatever you say, dang. you know what I mean. Uh, the biggest rapper of all time to come it's out. Such a good Pro rapper. Yeah, that's the biggest song to ever come out of Boston. Um, yeah. Let's see. Uh, damn, I hate to say this answer. Uh, Joiner Lucas. Probably, what do you think? Probably Joiner Lucas. What do you think? As far as fame, uh -huh. as far as fame, I'd say Joiner Lucas probably. Or Mark so, Wal Mark Wahlberg is the is the obvious answer, but I know no one's gonna no. give that give that. The it's credit. really it's it's really not because. Like they don't look. Nobody looks at Mark Wahlberg as being a rapper. Nobody, nobody. You know what I'm saying, but he had a rap but, song. He had two hit records. <laughs> yeah, he did. But still, you don't look at him as being a rapper. No, no, that's like, why. That's you're why. You're never why gonna I, say Mark Wahlberg. No. You will say John. John. You will say John Lucas is a rapper, but you know. But if you if you uh, really like, that's even more now. But if you go, can I go R and B and stretch it out? <laughs> if no, nah, no. Nah, if you stretch it out for hip hop. Right, and as a rapper, I mean, you really have to say Google. The reason why is because, first of all, he he took off quite some time ago, but he still, no matter what he did and where he went, he was from Boston. You know what I mean? And he, they had some great successes globally. Probably even still now, there's places where they listen, where they might not even listen to Jordan Lucas, but they they listen to Gangstar. 
and, and Google. You know what I mean? So if you think about a, someone who was just a rapper and was like, okay, let me go see this world and, and see what we can do. The dude became a famous rapper. You know what I mean? So, I mean, yeah, but if like you think you're saying, about though, it, like he, he didn't really, he, they, they, like, I know they weren't from New York, but that's a New York rap group. But, you know what I'm saying? This is like, what I'm saying to you. <clears throat> but you didn't hear the question. I said rapper from Boston. Yeah. Not group and whatever. He's from Boston, no matter what we No, do. yeah, yeah, yeah. You uh, see what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. You know, so that's what I was saying. Yeah. As far as, like, I'm not... I'm not gonna say the most popular rapper from Boston because I didn't think that ain't the case. You know what I mean? But as as a rapper, you see, it became more prevalent about the Boston connection. Obviously, as we said, with, with my with my involvement and stuff like that, where you you just knew where it is what it is. You see what I'm saying? And there'll be some more. Well, yeah, that's that the difference though, that. because you would rap about Boston, like you would say right. Murder Pan, or Boston. You would you would say it, but right. I didn't really hear a lot right. coming from him. You know not, what I'm saying? Not in the beginning. In the beginning, it, it was with him. Like once it wasn't until home. It, it wasn't until you guys did home. With the, who was that? With the creators. It wasn't mm -hmm. it? Wasn't until you guys did home where people were like, "Oh, Guru's ripping Boston." You, well, that you know that's what I'm one of them. And another, and another, another song is too. Um, it's just telling the story coming from where he came from. Uh, the song, the planet. the planet. You know what I'm saying? Because the planet, he talks about. You know, coming up and, and what he had to do to try to make it and yeah. how it was in Boston and how he left Boston to go to New York and what the what the thing it's a dope song to the planet. Yeah. But um you're right. It's obvious that it was more prevalent for him to say that when I came around. Yeah. Because there's no way that we started this shit and it, it, you wasn't gonna never have sure <clears throat> being like yo Brooklyn. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah so it was wasn't I, I didn't know him, but so I wasn't saying he was denouncing his Boston roots or anything like that. But on records, for, as listening to it as a as a consumer, you're right. It was all he had New York Yankees hat on. You, you know what I'm saying? You're so, right. So you're I right. had I had moved Thank here from New York, and when I moved here, I thought Gangstar was from New York, and then it wasn't until right. I had been here for a few, maybe till I don't know like '95 or six or something like that, where I was like, oh shit, these guys are from Boston. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. it wasn't until later, yeah. later, later that I realized that Primo was, was me, from Texas. Me personally, I feel like they all embraced where they were from even more so when it got like that because I wasn't just a dude hanging out with my brothers, you know, Google for men. Yeah. I was integral to, to the group, like to the crew, to the day to day, to what we was doing, how we was moving, whatever, you know what I mean? Our dudes took a lot of stake into what I said and, and shit like that. And, you know, and, and, Still a lot of hilarious shit and having fun too, but yo, like I said, when the movie comes, if that people even get more clarity right. on that. But so, so here's a question: it, If you ask the average mm -hmm. gangstar fan from fucking Belgium, where's Guru from? Do you mm -hmm. think they would say Boston or New York City? Yeah, probably so. Probably Boston. Okay. The reason why is because you know we went on them tours. And all them tours, I was like shouting that out. So it was nothing you could say. We from Boston. He was like, like, he like was balancing it out. <laughs> he was like, you know, Yo, I say New York too much. I got. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, so think about it. So that's why, because once I saw, I went on. We did millions of tours, like really, like, yeah, yeah. And we're claiming Boston. We did mad interviews where it's like, so yeah, it had the you know, um, like even even when I step, like you know, when I step on the stage and I can be in Istanbul or wherever. And I said, y'all know where I'm at? Y'all, you know where I'm from? And they're like, um, uh, Boston, Boston, you get something to say, murder pun, do with that accent, murder pun. Did you I coin mean, that phrase? Pun. Did you make that uh -huh. up? Did you make that up? Well, murder pen? Yeah. No, here's the, here's what happened. So, years ago, I was hanging with my friends, a few of them, you know, and um, there was a movie called The French Connection. Mm. You know what I mean? So, we were first calling ourselves the Manapan Connection, you know, with a lot of cats, me, um, Benny, the Jones brothers, Benny Jones, shout out to him, Eddie Jones, Walter Hilliard, uh, Pee Wee Clark, these are the dudes, Brian All Jones, the rest in peace. <laughs> um, rest in peace, uh, beef, you know. Um, so we were, um, and Mark Wells, yeah, my man, and it was quite a few of us, Jimmy M is a few more. And um, dudes came up with like, yo, so we're going to be the Matter Pan Connection, but then flipped it to the Murder Pan Connection. Mm. You know what I mean? So years later, everybody started saying, yeah, there's murders there and this and that. 
but it was that simple with us. We actually went to this store called Hobby Fair. There used to be in Mattapan Square. Cause Hobby Fair, Mattapan Square. You could go inside and buy shirts there. But that's what really happened. So we went to Hobby Fair and they could um, make these shirts that said MPC on one sleeve and Murder Pan Connection. And then it said what our nicknames were. You know what I mean? So I had Sugar Bear on mine and like the Pee Wee might have Pee Wee or this one and that one. You know what I'm saying? And there was a couple other guys who got Murder Pan Connection shirts. Um, and Murder Pan Connection shirts because they thought that they were part of Murder Pan Connection or NPC. Yeah. One brother, I'm not going to give his, say his name because I don't oh, want to be embarrassed. About I, know, I know he watches the show. We talked but about he this bought a shirt, off, God, came God. down to the park. He came to the park and, and, and he was like, oh shit, and everybody was down there like, oh man, nice shirt. Then they tore it off, <laughs> right? So he, so he went home with no shirt on looking bad. But I mean, the other dude that was his boy, and these dudes are two successful lawyers now. Oh, but this man. other boy that was boys told, I told him don't get it, right? <laughs> I'm just saying, because we was really rah-rah for real. Like these dudes just lived in Mattapan and thought, okay, I'll be, uh, that's like if it's a crip town or something. And some dudes that live like across the street somewhere like we're Crips too. Yeah, yeah. And they beat the shit out of them. You know what I mean? So now, it's, now it crip. was that type Old. of thing. But <laughs> anyway, um, but yeah, that's where that came from. MPC, shout out to the brothers. Now it's kind of like Gangstar Foundation. It's kind of a blanket now where a lot of cats are like, you know, we from Murder Pan, MPC, whatever. Yeah. Because there's generations of people that grew up. So now, you know, it's, it's like that but the original dudes I can even think of a number of the guys I mentioned whatever those were the original guys where it was like the DT2 and Roy Jones we're gonna be the man of, uh, Murder Pen Connection so you know shout out to my brothers oh, yeah. I don't see everybody that much anymore but those that are still here man what's good um, you got something else there you want, nah just uh, this whole this whole <laughs> this whole camera on uh Noriega thing is getting funnier and funnier. The whole podcast thing with their, their when Nori and Joe were dissing '90s rappers, remember? So Cameron, Cameron and Mace had something to say about it, or they felt that Noriega was dissing them, or Joe Budden, whatever was dissing them. So then they made this clip, and then they put rappers like Fredro Starr and like all these other people who, who used to have podcasts, and they're like, in my opinion, like now you're dissing them. You're mad someone was dissing you. And, and now you're, you're using that to go diss other rappers. So, I mean, I thought it was funny, but I, thought, I was like, oh, man. <laughs> I mean, you know what I'm saying? Why you must have so much man, drama? People, Podcast drama is a real thing. For that. That's real. I mean, everybody's looking for that next thing, like or to, to make a little noise, a disturbance. But, you know, literally, some of the nosiest, uh, social media is some of the nosiest people. That's number one. Yeah. But then at the same time, some shit you really don't care about. Like, you don't care about some shit, man. You really know it. You know, like, what is this shit? Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? And they're looking for likes and clicks, pins and sticks. The motherfuckers <laughs> are clowns. You know what I mean? What's so, I mean, it's, it's, it is what it is. You know what I mean? I'm so, let people keep saying what they say, whatever. We're going to be here, man. You know, 67 episodes. Yeah. Deep. You feel me? That's you know all. what I'm saying? That's all, I, zone. It, that's all I had for uh, hip hop, but I wanted to. Um, I'm not getting on that wagon yet. I'm not on that wagon, but I want to shout out to the it's Knicks. Coming is the train coming? No, I want to oh. shout out to the Knicks for winning their first playoff series in a decade. Um, you know they're up one game right now, but we're just well, focusing on that last series. Uh -huh. can, they're up one game right now on the new series, but I'm just talking about the last one. They've been a long time since, since they won anything. Yo. So congrats over there. Yo, them. you got. You gotta look at that again, DL, because I think they're one and one. Oh, okay, they're one and one. Okay, I, I know. Yeah, right. because uh, the first game they lost at home, mm -hmm. um, and then the second game, that, which is last night, they just won. Um, but the other team didn't have Jimmy Butler, who, yeah. who was all everything for Miami. So, and they just barely won last night. Game two, but they won. Eleven to one hundred five. Yeah, game two. Yeah, they, so. they 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 won, but shout out to them too because that's a big jump for a lot of years, two. man. It's like you know, um, it's also was disappointing that Boston lost their first game uh, at home because now Boston's the number one seed, so all their series will they'll be the home team if they got get through them. Um, they lost to a Joe and Beatless. Yeah, uh, he was out. Shout out to Joe Joel and B winning his first uh, MVP trophy, but he was out. 
So they probably looked at it like, oh, we'll beat the hell out of them. But they lost. James Harden returned to vintage James Harden and had 45 points. So the Celtics lost. But as we sit here, I still feel they win the series. Um, they played Joel B to be back tonight, and they play tonight at 8 p.m. So shout out to them. Um, it's interesting. Uh, last night, Golden State um, lost to the Lakers. Yeah. You know, uh, and um, that seems, seems to be an interesting uh, series. My take on all this, um, oh, and um, and Utah is up two against Phoenix, which um, That's Phoenix true. has Kevin Durant and, and, and Devin Booker and all those guys. So they're up two with Jokic and those guys. So, you know, <clears throat> it's been very interesting. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I've been enjoying it. Um, all right? Uh, the, um, uh, yeah, with the Bruins. Yeah. Ooh, oh, that's that, a soft that, spot. Yo, yo, but but the Bruins, the Bruins, like we could cut this part out, but that, that's what I got a whole thing for them being stupid as hell. <laughs> oh, well, we don't even have to cut it out if we're going there. So, um, you, but yeah, you ready for, for uh, uh, is that everything? You got anything you want to talk about? Anything in this in this week that happened? Nothing you can think of? No. No. All right. So what's that time of the week? There's some sometimes there's t- time of the month. <laughs> oh boy, the danger zone, la zona del peligro. But on the danger zone, it's the time of the week, and it's time for stupid as hell. Bam, 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 bam. Stupid as hell. This week, stupid as hell, is not one person. It's a bunch of people. Actually, it's a whole team. Oh. Actually, it's a whole organization. Uh-oh. Because. This stupid, the week stupid as hell is the Boston Bruins. Reason being is because the Boston Bruins just completed the best record ever in the NHL. I believe they won 65 games, um, yep. if, I'm, if I'm not mistaken. But it was incredible. Incredible run, incredible feat. But the worst thing that could possibly happen is that they were eliminated by the Panthers, Florida Panthers, I believe it was. Um, in the first round and dominated basically at home um, everywhere like they just lost the shit <laughs> so what I'm saying at home too because it was a game seven at home that they got, they got smacked yeah. now the reason why I say they're stupid because team, not only did you lose so it showed that you were out physical you were out aged you are uh, mental because their stars man Bergeron and um, and Krejci and those sort of guys they, you know, they, they're on the twilight side, right? But eventually, look, I mean, it looked like they got tired. They, they're starting, uh, Cole Tender was, was um, I believe, injured. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Linus Omark, I believe. Um, and, um, you know, it just, it was it was terrible because it's like, I feel they might have rested, should have rested some guys at certain times. I feel that there were moves that should have been made. Um, even the coach should have made them. But everybody's riding the wave, you know what I'm saying? You're great until you're not great no more. Yeah. Meaning that they were winning all the games just like the Patriots the same year, um, the same time when they won all the games except for the Super Bowl. Well, it's it's um it was a great year, but overall it's a failure to me because and probably to them, because your determining goal for all these sports is the championship. You know what I mean? It's it's that's what you're trying to do. Super yeah. Bowl, the cups, you know, uh baseball. Uh, World Series and so many you know you're trying to get that and for them to have such a great year and to come out as duds it shows me that the whole team is stupid as hell now I remind you I'm always going to be a Boston fan because it's not what I do it's who I am you understand so I'll always be a Boston fan but this week and probably the whole offseason the Bruins are stupid as hell. Damn. <laughs> mm. And that's coming from a fan. Yeah. Hey. Mm. So, yeah. All so, right. That was another one. What's it's that? been real. 67. 67. I'm trying to think of several so, more number 67. Couldn't think of it off the top. 67. Oh. And I would like, I like to know to Mr. DL and, and Chef Tanya Nicole. What are your socials? No, but anyway, right? <laughs> <laughs> hit, hit, hit the like button. Hit the like button. 
Yeah, you know I mean, we appreciate y'all coming through. Subscribe. Um, next week, we're gonna throw somebody man on the Danger Zone bus. Put them on there. See, we got that. We got a new thing. You know, we either you're gonna get on the Danger Zone bus or you're gonna be throwing them in the ether. We'll yeah. figure oh, it out. Oh boy. Usually, ne- usually we talk we- shit about. I just want to drive. Usually we talk <laughs> shit when when people cancel or or are late, but uh, this mm-hmm. week I don't think any of us are gonna talk shit this week. But next week, I don't care. Yeah, we got. Yeah, a, a Brooklyn legend mm-hmm. coming through, so you guys will be happy when that happens. BK yep. gonna and, be and in the and house, it, and, it, and it got to go down because if, if it if it doesn't he, go down on the Danger Zone bus, yeah, then you'll be underneath the Danger Zone no bus. Point. He hasn't well, he hasn't canceled at all. He's never canceled this this guy next. No, that's cool. A big he, bus he, or he, a little bus? Hey yo, remember he, we asked him earlier, and then he said, "I'm gonna wait till my album comes out." His, his album just came out Friday, so that's oh why, yeah, that's why I asked him. I thought about I thought you were um. I thought you were about to segue into Michael Jackson. No. Oh, boy. Because you were saying, you were trying to get it out, but you kept saying, he, 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 he. I was like, no. I was, I was like, wait a minute. I don't That's even the know. I, I don't even know, man. But listen, we appreciate all y'all coming through this week, man. Episode 67. Hell yeah. Remember, excuses have no purpose, so don't make them. Don't, don't make them. As we grow, we glow. You know what I'm saying? And we're going to continue to push forward, man. You know, we know it ain't easy. Shout out to Jamie Foxx, too. We hope yeah. you get well yep. soon, brother. Yep. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, you know, just, you never know what's, what can happen, man, what's around the corner, man. So live life to the fullest. I know it's cliche, but it's real. You know, each day, man, do something, man. Yeah. Always be better to do better. Do better to be better, so to speak. All right? Have a good one. Peace. All right, peace. On my dark days. On my dark days, I chop crack on the regular. Ran up in spots and clapped on a regular. Took big fat ass stacks from the register. No matter how hard they tried, they still couldn't measure up.